Okay, well, the first sort of question, uh, if you like, I suppose it's a, a, it's a sort of historic question. Is it possible um, to provide a true account of the ultimate bits that make up the universe? I know you're sort of, Rupert, you're sort of anti this sort of reductionist idea, why are we so obsessed with bits anyway? But I want to ask, uh, can, we, can we get to, the, to the, the, the turtle foundations, I suppose? You mentioned vibrating strings. You know, that's kind of where we are at the moment. That's the sort of theory du jour, for good reason, string theory. Paul, perhaps you can just yeah. tell us perhaps where we are at the moment. Yes. Uh, and where we can go. Can, we, get it, can we cut it even uh, smaller? I want to take, say two things. The first is to sort of arrive at a compromise, because reductionism gets a bad press. And uh, I'm a fan of reductionism, by the way. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put my cards on the table. Right. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and it's certainly true, you learn a lot by smashing things to bits and seeing how they're put together. Um, and it's been immensely successful, and, uh, and Rupert is quite right, it does cost a lot of money to build particle accelerators. Um, but we've discovered new particles that couldn't be found any other way. Uh, there's a sort of semi-understanding of what's going on among all those little bits and pieces, um, but we're a long way from a complete understanding. But obviously, it's productive. And so it's a, a very effective way of uh, having a first go at understanding the world, but it's absolutely not the whole story. And it, even if you figured out all of the fundamental particles, it wouldn't tell you how I'm likely to vote in the next election or anything of that sort. And so, uh, you know, I completely agree that there's the layer upon layer of emergent uh, phenomena that require their own uh, laws and principles uh, that should be consistent with but not reducible to those down at the bottom level. Absolutely agree. I think there's that middle position. It's not hopeless. It's not one or the other. We need both. Uh, where are we at? Well, uh, that, that could be a very long conversation, but uh, the, the theoretical physics community is in thrall of something called string theory or it's sometimes M theory. The idea being that unlike Democritus who wanted little particles, everything made out of little particles, the idea is they're made out of little strings, lo little loops of strings that wriggle around and as they wriggle in different ways, uh, this is perceived by us on a bigger scale as different types of particle. Uh, and th so the idea is there's only one or maybe a few types of string, so the fundamental entity would be this string and out of it would come not just the particles of matter, but the particles that convey the fundamental forces of nature, like electromagnetism and gravitation and so on, would all be in that mix. And so uh, if you could get this to work, uh, you'd have a super duper equation that you could wear on your t-shirt and it would capture in a succinct math mathematical way all natural phenomena, particles, forces and everything. It's wonderful. Some of my colleagues have wasted their whole lives actually uh, <laughs> working, working in this area, but they <laughs> remain upbeat that they will get there eventually. <laughs> But, you know, it's a so decades-long quest, so and it's not done yet. String theory is kind of where we are at the moment. I mean, I noticed they're actually yeah. they're turning on the... Lar they're cranking up the LHC, mm. the Large Hadron yes, Collider. Yes, they're yes. so a long way from string. For another so. run. Mm. So the, the big news a few years ago was, um, and I mentioned the, the, the Higgs boson, the Higgs particle that sort of gives particles mass. Um, what are they going to... What are we looking for now? Are we looking for, are we looking for string? Are we going to well, see, like, a wiggly worm? Well, <laughs> uh, I, uh, at the risk of, of dominating the conversation, well, shut gonna, me up, because otherwise I my wife will stand up. Okay, very, just very... Just very, uh, um, <laughs> very quick, and I'm going to come on to a uh, question for Katie. Uh, uh, the uh, what was the question again? I can't remember. <laughs> I'll come on to Katie. Yeah. Well, actually, we're, we're, while we're on the subject of t-shirts, yeah. in, in the CERN gift shop, they sell the t-shirts with the, yeah. the the standard model of sort of mm. particle physics on it. I mean, what are, yes, it's a, the standard model is the, the term that we need to introduce. Yeah, and, and I, I'm sort of interested yeah. from a sort of philosophical point of view because where yeah. does philosophy come into all this? Because basically, aren't we just looking closer and closer? What what are, what are philosophy philosophers got to t talk to us about? Well, there's a couple of things in kind of recent developments where I think philosophy uh, is brought to bear on it. So one, uh, Paul was saying that uh, some of his colleagues have wasted their time on string theory. One of the reasons people worry about string theory is because if we don't have any uh, hope of any empirical uh, justification, uh, then people worry that's not very scientific. So the, the kind of hallmark of science is often meant to be that it's possible to falsify your theories, show that they were wrong. Um, and if there's no way of getting any empirical evidence for um, string theory, uh, then people worry that that's, it's not on a, a safe footing. And so let's can, I just just yeah. can you just uh, expand a bit on this idea of falsification for those yes. who aren't familiar with where it yeah. comes from and what it means? Because I think it's a really important term. Right, so uh, falsification goes back to the uh, philosopher of science, uh, Popper, uh, who was at the LSE. Uh, his idea was the thing that really tells the difference between uh, science and pseudoscience uh, is 
whether you can falsify your theory. Can you do an experiment and show that, in fact, it could have been wrong? So it's not about proving you're, you're correct. It's actually seeing if, yes, if you exactly. can pull your theory apart and disprove right. it. If, if there was no possible way of disproving it, right. um, say, every time you had some evidence that didn't look like it quite fitted with your theory, you just came up with another kind of ad hoc modification, then that wouldn't count as being a scientific theory. And where are we with, with string theories? Are, are, are people accusing that of being unfalsifiable? It's not... I guess it's tricky. It's, uh, it's not unfalsifiable in principle. It just looks very difficult. Um, yeah, the, the, the problem is you've got... You, you talked about a Large Hadron Collider. If you really wanted to pull the strings apart, so to speak, and poke around, you'd need to go 20 orders of magnitude greater in energy. 20 orders of magnitude. It's one followed by 20 zeros above the Large Hadron Collider. But we know that what the Large Hadron Collider has... Uh, to answer your previous question, has found is incomplete because there's something called the standard model of particle physics, which is our best understanding of the uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, weak and strong nuclear forces, and it's worked brilliantly for decades, but it can't explain why neutrinos have mass or what the dark matter is in the universe, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. We know there's physics beyond the standard model, and the hope with the revamped Large Hadron Collider is we get a glimpse of what that physics might be, maybe by even producing uh, a, an un, a new particle. Rupert, you, you're, I, I get the sense you're really anti, you, you said you're sort of anti the, this reductionist view of the universe. I don't think physicists would disagree with you when you talk about it's, it's more than that. Mm. Why are you so anti it? What, what, why, and, and why are you so anti the... the th I don't want to say anti the scientific method because you're not, but what, but you're anti how science is done. You you mentioned sort of oh they throw lots of money at this thing and th th this is, hmm. this isn't the only game in town. And I'm wondering where that comes from. I think it's partly a question of the distorted priorities that result from the reductionist worldview. So in biology, it comes down to funding eventually. I mean, in biology, the vast majority of funding goes to molecular biology. The Medical Research Council, for example, used to have quite a number of research centres that looked at medical conditions, medical outcomes. It's now been centralised at the Francis Crick Institute in near St Pancras Station. And Francis Crick was never a doctor, he never cured anyone. He was a, a molecular biologist. And so the whole ethos is one of molecular medicine. Well, that doesn't help people who've got, you know, there are lots of medical conditions where molecular medicine is not the answer. Uh, the very fact there's a placebo effect shows us the power of the mind in in, in But the curing. mind is still made up of atoms. The minds are in brains which are made up of atoms. Well, you see, that's the particles. reductionist and the materialist philosophy. Yeah. And and, uh, uh, well, so uh, it's also the correct... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you, you see. You're the moderator. If, if I, oh, I'm the moderator, so I'm not like. Yeah. If, <laughs> I, I, but, but if you but have, if you have a view that it, it's not. A, what I mean, it's not really a view. It, it's uh, you of course it's a view. Is it? It's a view. It's a view. <laughs> it's a reductionist philosophy of yeah. nature, a materialist philosophy. Um, my book, The Science Delusion, since you mentioned it before me, I. <laughs> takes the ten principal dogmas of science and looks at and turns them into hypotheses that can be questioned exactly as you say. Are they refutable hypotheses? No, they're not. Um, the materialism, uh, if you say, well, what would be testable? Materialism says the mind's nothing but the activity of the brain. It's yeah. all inside the head. What would refute it? Yeah. E.g., the existence of telepathy which would imply thoughts having an action at a distance. Does it refute it? Do materialists give up and say, oh, wow, we were wrong? No, they don't. They say, this isn't evidence at all. That does, it doesn't exist and it's impossible and therefore I'm not even going to look at it. Yeah. So the trouble is that Popper's philosophy of science is an idealized view that assumes all scientists are totally rational. They're not motivated by emotions or their own beliefs. I Whereas don't believe in fact that scientists believe that, though. I, certainly the scientists I know, I don't believe that scientists think like that. Certainly the scientists that I know, they don't... Um, well, there's, one at, this, scientists there's one at this very conference, Richard Dawkins, who does think like that. I, well perhaps <laughs> we should... Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, the, the, I've had discussions with him on these very subjects. As far as he's concerned, there is no evidence because it's impossible. And, and therefore, the, all this careful philosophy of it could be refuted and stuff, that's not the way it works. You've got a system of belief, a system of priorities, and a system of careers. I mean... Particle physicists need more particle accelerators. They need these things to work. Yeah. Otherwise, they won't get billions of euros more to fund them. 
It's not just a question of objectively looking at the facts. No, 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 I, I know, but, and, uh, you, you know, but you're bringing up sort of values and human things, and I'm, I'm sort of interested in how, how deep can we go down the, down the stack of turtles? And, and but that's a value a and a human thing. I mean, it's a, yeah. human, it, it's a value when someone makes a decision to spend billions of euros on one thing and nothing on another. That's a value that thing. That, that, uh, yeah, and and true, scientists that pretend that their work is objective, but look at any grant application, and in the first paragraph, they tell you that they're going to cure cancer or solve the problems of the world or cure global warming. Yeah. All sorts of exaggerated and, and basically untrue claims that give that particular research program a value so they can get the money for it. I, mm, I, I, it's I just the way it works. I think, well, it may, it may be the way. I suppose, uh, for me, sort of, you know, I, you know, I spend my time with scientists, they, they, they would argue with you. They're like... Of course they would. They're like... <laughs> I, I'm well, I'm no, I'm but, I'm but you, I'm made the, you, made, you seem to sort of suggest <laughs> that sci scientists all drive around in Ferraris and they're in it of for the money. They and they're just no. not. No, they're not in it for the money, but the many of them are in it for their careers and jobs. Well, they, there is a bandwagon effect, you know, again, to yeah. take a middle position. It's, uh, Rupert's quite right that there's certain things people rush after of course because they get you Nobel Prizes or they... Uh, get you they a get job. you in um, Nature magazine, and, and and what happens is that there are various sort of thought leaders who dominate the, or that s d define the scientific agenda, and so and people rush in, and they and of course there's some sort of self-serving aspect of this, um, but when I look at scientific endeavour over the last two hundred years or so, you know by and large I approve of what's been done. Uh, yeah, there's a man saying. Time. There's a man at the back saying "end" on a very large piece of paper. Do we have to go? Is that the end of <laughs> physics? No, no, no. We can say. Oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up on that, Paul. I, I want to go into the sort of next theme, if I can. Katie, this is for you. Okay. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below, or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.